Okay, now on the topic on number patterns, okay, most of the time when you are actually using a question like that, what happens is you will need to take note of the number sequence, okay? What is the first step you can actually do or rather take your approach to this kind of question is to actually find the common difference, okay? So if there is a common difference, for instance, let's say 2, 5, 8, okay, 11, you can see that the common difference is plus 3, right? So if this is a yes, what happens is you will apply your a1 plus d n minus 1 formula. Now what is this? What am I trying to say here? Okay, a1 means your the term, okay, you will say the first term that is given, okay, and then d would be the common difference. Okay, however, right, take a look at this question. This question does not give you a common difference. In fact, okay, now this is where you don't have a common difference. You will look for special terms. Now, what do we mean by special terms? Special terms such as n square, n cube, okay, or in fact, you have square roots or cube roots, for instance. Okay, so these are what we call common difference and terms that you are supposed to know. Now, let's take a look at this. 9 tells you that this might be a 3 to the power of 2. Then you look at, look at the second one. Oh, this can be a 4 to the power of 2, and the third one would be a 5 to the power of 2. So can you see a trend that subsequently you have a 6, 2, and a 7, 2? Okay, so what is the first answer that you should write in the part one answer, okay? You should have one, which is the next two terms, you will have eight square, okay? And this would give you a good 64, as well as nine square, which would give you a 81, okay? Now, part two, which is a very, very common issue that most students would face, okay? There isn't a standard way to you know actually do number patterns, but what you can actually do to approach these kind of questions is to practice more, that's number one, and always look out for common common differences, okay? So I believe like, you know, you have played spot difference, that kind of things. So these are what we look out for when you're doing number patterns. You need to see what is the something new, okay, that you can actually apply to what you have learned. So you have learned N square. Correct? And you know that the first term in this case is 3, 2, which is 9. Correct? Okay, so this tells you that, oh, if let's say n is 1, that's a wrong wrong term, correct? However, if I do this, n plus 2, whole thing square, okay, will I get 9 as my answer? So let's say n equals to 1, n plus 1 plus 2 square gives you 3 square, which will give you 2. Now, always remember, check your answer. Now, what do I mean by that? When n equals to 2, Okay, what do you have over here? You'll have 2 plus 2 whole thing squared. Now, do you get 4 squared, which is 16? Yes. Okay, make sure to check. Okay, I always tell my students, check your number pattern and term for at least, okay, key terms, check for at least 3 sequence before you confirm your and term. Why? Because most of the time, some students will actually write down careless mistakes, for example. Or most of the time, you will just jump into it because you will feel that it's a very common term that you have seen. Okay, but it might or might not be applicable to this particular question. So therefore, for part 2, what would your answer be? Your answer would be n plus 2 whole thing squared as your n term. Okay, so now then let's take a look at the third, uh, third part. Alright, third part is more straightforward. So now that you have your n term, okay, you would have part 3 over here which would tell you when n equals 25, that means the 25th term, okay? It means that n plus 2, n plus 2 whole thing square would be 25 plus 2 whole thing square, which is 27 square. Now, press into a calculator, 27 square, what will you get? Okay, you will get a 7, 2, 9. Okay, so this will be your final answer. Now, what is the common thing that you actually need to take note when you're approaching an n term question? So, we are moving on to the part 2, okay? We are moving back towards the part 2 point. Now, when you have an n term, okay, always remember n term means when n equals to 1, okay, what would your number be? Okay, what would the term be? Okay, so in this case, okay, when you have 9, 16, 25, 36, and 49, when n equals to 1, okay, the term is actually 9. So always remember, when n equals to 1, it does not always necessarily mean it's 1. Because a common a common example, or rather a common uh, mistake that students will make, is that they will jump into it and just give n square as their n term. Okay, so please remember to check. Okay, the way to avoid it is to check. Alright, the way to understand the concept is to learn what n term actually means. Okay, yep.